Good morning everybody, welcome to Rushton Fire Station. This week's been a little bit different because we've been having a short talk on every day uh, and today's subject is all about water safety. So that's water safety in the home, when you're out and about perhaps walking down the riverbank, it could be in a swimming pool, the beach, anything like that. So we're just going to go through a few things uh, to help keep you and your children safe. So first of all, the weather has been absolutely fantastic recently and because we're all locked in at home, I'm sure some of you, or maybe a lot of you, have got the paddling pools out. Now as you can see, I've got my little paddling pool here, we're not going to get many people in this one, but it's just the idea to show you how much water that you need in a paddling pool um, that can be unsafe. So in here, I've literally got about an inch of water in the paddling pool. You need to supervise your children at all times uh, in any type of water area like this. In a paddling pool, some of you might have the bigger pools that are more like a small swimming pool that you can get in your garden. But even in an inch of water, you can die. You've only got to fall over and get your nose and your mouth under the water um, and that can be the end if there's nobody there to look after you. So once again, round paddling pools in the garden, anything like that, please have adult supervision all the time. If you've got a pond in the garden or you might be lucky enough to have a hot tub in the garden, make sure that you've got a fence or somewhere where you can um, fence the, the pond off or make sure you've got your cover on top of the hot tub if you're not using it. Um, children love water and we just want to keep them safe at all times. Going back indoors and we get to bath time. Ideally, it's a good idea to have one of these non-slip mats in your bath, if you're bathing the little ones. They tend to wriggle about a lot and they can easily slip. And once again, if you've just popped out maybe to get a nice warm towel for them to wrap them up, they can easily slip, bang their head and go under that water. Obviously the temperature of the water in the bath has to be just right, not too hot for them. We don't want to scald them. Um, but once again, if we can just keep somebody in that bathroom, they might be in the bath with a bigger brother or sister, there might be a bit of to in and fro in with them and we can never know what happens and the last thing we want to do is walk back in that bathroom with that warm fluffy towel and find your child under the water. Another thing, once we can get out and about, you might go to the seaside. Now lots of people have gone to the seaside recently where I think really they shouldn't have been, but um, we are going to eventually be able to go to the seaside as a family and enjoy it. On the beaches, the beaches do get very busy on a hot summer's day and under normal circumstances, most of our beaches will have lifeguards. They're easily recognisable because they have um, red shirt, sorry, red shorts and a yellow shirt on. There are also flags on the beach to keep us safe and it tells us when we can or cannot go into the water. So if we get to the beach and we see two flags either end of the beach and it's showing a red and a yellow flag like this one, this means it is safe to go into the water and there is a lifeguard on duty. If we get there and we see the red flag, the red flag definitely means danger and that is there for a reason that the lifeguards don't want you going into the water. The water might look fine to you but there could be strong undercurrents and um, the tide's going out or coming in but we don't want you in the water when there's a red flag and there will be one at either end of the beach. Please don't disobey it, it is there for a reason. One of the more unusual flags we might see is a black and white checkered one. What this means is where there's two flags on the beach with the black and white check, it means that there are people like windsurfers or jet skiers there and we need to stay out of their way and they need to stay out of our way. So once again, if you get the checkered flag, it's not the end of the race, it's just keeping safe away from the jet skiers and the windsurfers. We might also decide to go out for a family walk. The weather's beautiful, it's nice to get out. If we're walking along the side of the riverbank and we've perhaps got the dog with us and the, job, uh, the dog decides, okay, I'm gonna jump in the water and it gets in there and you think, oh, there's something wrong with the dog, it can't get out, I need to jump in the water. Never ever go in the water after a dog. Dogs can swim and especially in colder times when the weather's not like this, the water will always be cold regardless of the weather, but the dog's got a big thick furry coat which will keep it warm. So therefore, the dog probably will get out. If you really feel your dog is in danger, dial 999, ask for the fire service, and we could perhaps get our animal rescue team out to look after the dog and get the dog out. But if we're just out with our friends and we're walking along and you're messing about, and one of your friends falls in the water and they're not very good swimmers, we must not go in after them. 
Um, quite often the person that goes in to rescue somebody is actually the person that doesn't get it out again. So there are things we can use that we might have with us. So if you're out with your friends, you've been having a game of football and the football's on the side, if you throw the football to that person in the water, it floats. They can hang on to it until you can get help to them. You might not have a football. The weather might have been a bit wet, so you might have an umbrella. So what we teach you to do is you can reach, but the main thing is you don't stand up and reach because you can topple in. You need to lay flat across the bank and then stretch out. If you're doing that, you've got your arms length more and you can stretch out with that umbrella. It could be you've got the dog lead. Put it out, anything to be able to pull them in. Maybe a, a sweatshirt, you could actually put the arms out like that. Okay, this is mine, so it's not very big, but you might have one that's a bit bigger, but it stretches. And last of all, you can have a look around on the bank and you might find a nice big stick like this. This is ideal. Get down on the bank, you're flat out, and you can push that right out to your friend to pull them in. That's just a few things in the summer, very briefly. Don't leave your kids in the paddling pool. If the dog goes in or your friend goes in, you don't go in after them. Don't go in the sea with a red flag and make sure you've got that non-slip bath mat in the bath. Enjoy your summer and we'll speak to you again soon.